Warning, this video contains graphic images of deadly spiders and lots and lots and lots of little deadly spiderlings. Well, hello, this is week nine of the Deadly Redback Spider Tank Prison Slash Truman Show Time Lapse Edition. This is the period of time between week eight to week nine. Back in week eight, there were four spiders that were introduced to the tank and bang, 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 bang. Uh, they all went down. Maybe I missed out a bang there. I have got the flu, so I'm not feeling very well. I probably sound a bit croaky as well. But I'm just trying to get this video up because I've got all these people. All I hear from them is, Leo, where's the next spider video? And maybe a nice, pleasant reminder to some people is, I'm not just a spider study producer on YouTube, if that makes any sense. I've always looked at toys and spiders for a long, long time. And I've had some people say to me, Oh, but Leo, the spider videos scare me. Well, don't click on them. You're, if you're clicking on these and seeing spiders, you can't blame me for that. It's your decision to click on a video and watch it. I don't stand there and demand you to click on a video to watch. I would never do that, and I can't do that. It's your decision whether you watch something or not. I mean, surely that's not too much to ask for here. Anyway, this time-lapse edition is a little bit different, or it's very different, because the spiderlings have totally changed the dynamic of the tank here. The dead carcasses of the spiders are becoming food for the redback spider that did all the killing, plus there's other things that come in and feed as well. If you look behind the spiders there, you can see the tank is just alive with all sorts of mites, and goodness knows what, there's a whole sort of microbiology thing going on there. I don't understand what's going on there, but... For some reason, from here on, it really stays very wet inside there. Uh, it's a bit like it was all being pulled apart by the microbes. And of course, there are other spiders in there as well. Those reddish widow spiders are also keeping a low profile. Rarely do you ever see them interacting with the redbacks. And maybe that's a very clever strategy because I'm pretty sure the redbacks would take them out really fast. There's one thing about the spiderlings I noticed. I could control them with light, and in this episode, I used light to basically get the spiderlings in front of camera, or they just basically go to a light source. They are manic at creating web, but the other thing about them is uh, you've got to be despicable to survive, so you need to be a, a honed killer, really, from day one. If you're not wired to kill, uh, you're going to be killed. Nature's very cruel like that, and one by one, in the spider tank, in, in essence, the spiderlings uh, start to basically feed on themselves, they are their own worst enemy. But what was really nice to see, and it did surprise me in a way, was I saw a spiderling feeding on the cluster of dead spiders, and I could see it had that expanding backside, like you see with the adult redback spiders. And I'll probably have to come in here, maybe put a red circle around it so you can see it. And because it's time-lapse footage, the it's all time-compressed, and I get to see things uh, that you would normally not notice in real time. That's sort of the one beauty of time-lapse. I mean, some people don't like time-lapse footage. Yes, it can accelerate things uh, to be a little bit too fast, because the spiderlings do seem to scamper and move a little bit too fast. But you start to see subtle things that are normally not noticed if you're looking at something in real time. And seeing the mechanism of the spiderling's backside when it's feeding there and the way it contracts and expands and expands a lot is quite amazing. I was surprised to see that and it's something that uh, will hopefully surprise you as well. And remember, it's the most despicable spiderlings that will go on to be adult spiders and I think that spider feeding there is well on its way to becoming an adult. As I'm learning with the redback spiders, uh, those who become adults are psychopaths. They would have had to have done umpteen kills to get to where they are. And because the masses of spiderlings present an easy meal to the other psychopath spiders, which are a little bit older, I can witness a psycho redback spider who basically grabs a number of spiderlings and then ends up conglomerating it into a nice little cluster of spiderlings for a lovely, lovely meal. So the spider tank here is becoming the ultimate spider den of life and death. It's a sort of place where if you're having a bad day, you're going to die. And if you're having a good day, well, you haven't had a killer come and walk over you. It's a real luck of the draw sort of environment. And about the only way to make luck come your way is to start going on a killing spree. The female redback spiders, that is the larger ones who have laid up all the egg sacs, which got the eggs inside and the eggs will turn into spiderlings and then the spiderlings will hatch. I noticed that there's a lot of care and maintenance done to the egg sacs. They'll often do this walking procedure over them and tap them and move them. 
there'll be phases of time when the female spiders will do a lot of care and attention to the egg sacs, and then there are other times when they're just sat there and totally ignored, but we're just looking at a time period where the female redback spider is doing a lot of touching and caring of the egg sacs. When the egg sacs are freshly made, they're a very light beige colour, and they change colour over time as the eggs inside turn into spiderlings and the spiderlings grow, and they'll get to a very dirty looking, almost like a black seed inside, uh, just prior to the time when the spiderlings are ready to uh, come into the tank. When the spiderlings have grown a fair bit in there, the light can't penetrate through the egg sac. It must get very cramped in there because you've got hundreds upon hundreds of little baby spiderlings all eager to come out and become killers. This next piece of video that I've captured is very interesting. It's something I never expected to see. It sort of happens over the right-hand side, top right-hand side of the video here. You'll see what looks like one large female redback spider basically passing an egg sac across to our main large female redback spider that's been featuring in this part of the video. Now, this flies against the argument that these spiders are not sociable, they don't get on with each other. I'm pretty sure I just saw an effort to cooperate and basically share an egg sac. And remember, this is time-lapse footage, so we're seeing something that would have taken a fair bit of time compressed into a fairly short time. The female redback spiders will move the egg sacs by using their back legs in a very clever way, and they seem to be very picky in where the egg sacs get put, and they will line them up in a certain sequence. I dare say it's all secret spider stuff and what they're doing here. So witnessing the egg sac being passed by one large female redback spider to another is very curious. Does that mean that the spider who has received the egg sac becomes like a surrogate mother? And the egg sac ends up being lined up with the other egg sacs which are there, which I can only assume are her egg sacs. I could formulate a very strong argument saying these spiders do not live in a community, but then again I could actually formulate a strong argument saying I have witnessed these spiders act in a communal effort, and I think this is a classic example of two females acting as a community here. But who knows, one of these psycho mums may snap and end up killing the other redback spider in an instant. That's the way these girls operate. There's something I've noticed that's been a couple of times now, and I'm pretty sure this is what's going on, is the... Female redback spider will leave something that has been basically half eaten up around the egg sac. So when the spiderlings come out of the egg sac, there is something there to have a nibble on. There's a moth there around the egg sacs there. So often I've seen the spider will eat something, I'll suck it to nothing, and then it will just drop it. And other things in the tank will come and feed off it, be it crickets or whatever else is in the tank, the, the bottom feeders in a sense. But I'm pretty sure when I see the spider weave a piece of food in next to the egg sacs, I think that's the first meal for the spiderlings when they come out of the egg sac. Now I think the most vicious redbacks in the tank here, in relation to the spiderlings, is what I call the adolescent females. There is one smaller female here, there may be a number of them, I can't tell if I'm looking at the same spider, that just goes on this manic killing spree of spiderlings and just doesn't stop. And I'll put red circles around the areas where you want to watch because we're looking at little tiny things. But this girl, in the way she's wired, I am absolutely certain that she'll go on to be a fully grown female because it's the spiders that are like this, the manic killers who can't stop, are the ones that will be dominant here, and they're the ones which will survive. And another observation I'll make, and it will start a fight of the sexes here, I've never seen the male redback spider turn into a psycho spider. It's always the girls. And by witnessing that psychopathic teenage redback spider in a way, it's going on a killing spree and it can't control itself. Imagine if that redback spider was out in the business world or politics. You know what? It would go straight to the top. It would be a world leader. And sadly, that's the way the world works. The psychopaths control the planet. Well, that was the peek into the tank, the time-lapse version, week 9. At the end of the video here, let's give a thought to our old friend Gonzo. A very, very famous critter that entered the tank here many weeks ago. And we will always remember him in our hearts, won't we? Gonzo was definitely the greatest.